Today, I'm joined by Wendy Turner-Williams, former chief data officer at Tableau, board member, speaker, top 100 women in technology, and global data power woman. This conversation will hopefully have you laughing, engaged, and really find it inspiring for a tragic time of what's happening in technology with the layoffs that are going on right now. And so Wendy shares her story in terms of being laid off from Tableau and how she's used that to now create a community and bring people together and the similarities that exist between creating a community and being a chief data officer. There is something for everyone in this episode, and so I can't wait for you to have a listen and dive in. Wendy, welcome to the Data Bytes podcast. I had to finally just push record because otherwise we were going to chat the whole time. And, you know, we want to bring the audience in on this conversation because it is such a pleasure to talk to you. So welcome and thank you for making the time today. Yes, thank you, Sadie. It's so nice to be here. Um, you know, for those of you, you're seeing Wendy and all a natural. I thought Sadie and I were having just a regular get together. So I'm not dressed appropriately, but I'm a raw person and you get to experience it physically as well. So <laughs> I love it. I think it should be like a new episode series called like the raw and unfiltered, right? Where it's just like, oh, totally. you know, maybe we have them late at night. People show up in their PJs, you know, that's a whole other level. We'll, we'll consider that another time. I, I love so, it. I'm there for that. Especially if we can bring a couple of cocktails with it. And I'm sure it could be really, really fun. And we will definitely get a series, uh, you know, out of it, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Like maybe you bring your favorite cocktail, favorite data. I think we got something going on there. Okay, so we got some follow-up interviews to do for a whole other series we created. And this is one of my favorite reasons for talking with Wendy, because every time I talk with you, it's like 10 new ideas pop up or like 10 new ventures. Right? Yeah. You are like a breadth of innovation, which is just incredible. But what I want to dive into today is people have probably been hearing it all over the news, um, yeah. recent tech layoffs, and I have been seeing you pop up a ton in my LinkedIn feed because you've taken something kind of tragic, uh, you know, 10% of people getting laid off or a little more in many tech companies and turn this into a supportive, amazing community. So talk to us like, where did this start? What was your journey? Have you been one of the 10%? What's been going yeah. on? Yeah. Well, I, number one, I think that, um, as you mentioned, I mean, I think everyone in tech especially is seeing, seeing the news of layoffs all over your, your LinkedIn profiles, uh, you know, updates from friends, et cetera. So, you know, I think that coming out of COVID, um, you know, there was a lot of doubling down in hiring um, all around the globe in all types of different functions and fields that now there's some reactions that are happening um, to basically optimize, right, uh, both operations as well as what's happening in the market, right? Things have slowed now as far as transformation or investment now that COVID's kind of starting to wean out. Um so number one, was I part of the 10%? Well, um, I, my role was eliminated as chief data officer of Tableau back in November officially. And you might ask, why would they eliminate a chief data officer role? It's so important, especially for Tableau. Well, I would say that um, anytime that you're a company that's been acquired by another company, there's often a lot of changes that come with that, especially for leadership. And I think for, for Salesforce in particular, it's not necessarily a de-investment or a devaluation of data. I think it's more of a, there's a lot of other good leaders in the company, um, many of which I've been peers to for many years in the past. And they're doubling down to unify actually the data work happening in the company. And as a result of that, I decided to, to leave and look for new opportunities versus to stay. So that's number one. Um, number two, in regards to the 10%, the 10% basically stands for there was a big layoff that happened back on January, I think it was 4th um, or 5th, uh, for Salesforce, where they basically uh, started to eliminate 10% of their workforce. And that kind of got branded. And um, in particular, I had some folks on my old team that were impacted. And so that day, as things were happening, I was just trying to figure out how can I stay in contact with them? How can I support them? Because anyone who's ever gone through a layoff knows 
you know, a lot of people, especially in the tech community, tend to be type A, um, type, tend to overwork and over kind of invest yourselves in your careers. And you feel this kind of aloneness or almost like devaluation of you as an individual that can happen. And I wanted to make sure that that didn't happen. Um, plus, since I had hit the job market before them, I kind of know pockets where companies are hiring and not. And I wanted to get people really quickly to uh, to, to companies that are hiring. That now has turned into almost a 3,000 person um, community on Slack, not just for Salesforce, but Microsoft, Amazon, Coinbase folks are in there. We're really, A, we're, we're kind of feeling the day-to-day you know, cadence process that people are used to and how they're used to talking to each other through like Slack or through other channels like that in your work style. But we're also like supporting each other, helping each other like update resumes, um, helping people understand, uh, you know, new training opportunities. And because it's such large pools of talent, we're driving recruiters into the forum so that they can actually recruit and hire faster than you would typically do through like Monster or LinkedIn, where you're searching for a role one by one by one by one or candidates one by one by one and engaging them, you know, in, in such kind of a silo. Um, in fact, we had our first open house today for the forum. Uh, Data IQ did an open house and we had, you know, tons of people there asking roundtable questions to like four or five different recruiters across different functional areas. And again, the goal is really to help people kind of network quickly, get the support they need and find their next job, you know, as as quick as possible. Um, So to me, this is kind of what CDOs or what data people do all the time. We create communities where we help you get the information that you need to make decisions for yourself. It's kind of taking that type of a concept and applying it to a real world kind of tragic, you know, not so good of a story situation that's helping people through it in a new way. Yeah, I love the way that you tied in your previous role and how that's helping you in this new role that you're playing. Because I think a lot of people struggle with that. It's like, okay, what would leading a whole community have to do with being a CDO? (laughs) And you've been able to find, hey, take the title away and get to the raw skills. And those raw yeah. skills are still very applicable here. Yeah, it's t- it totally is. Again, I, I spend all day in my day job basically working with other leaders or working with businesses to try to understand what is it they're doing with the business? What are their strategies? How can I help inform that and make sure that they get the right quality, actual insights to make the decisions that they need? So, I mean, to me, creating community around that is actually how you bring and drive the value of data when you're crossing functions and looking at big pictures and improving the processes or the workflow or, or the streamlineness. And to me, this was the same concept. And the, the funny thing is, oh, I'm using a Slack. I, I didn't build anything new. I, I'm, I'm using Slack for something that is kind of like, why wouldn't Slack be used for something like this, right? Like, <laughs> why aren't people mm-hmm. using it? But I have had literally in the, just two weeks, I mean, it was two weeks yesterday that this started happening, at least for Salesforce folks. I've had almost a thousand emails or messages in the last two weeks from people who have thanked me for providing the community or oh, I feel, I don't feel alone. Or I've had two wives of husbands who were laid off contact me directly to say, this has really changed our, our life. And thank you so much. We, we feel like things are moving faster. It, we're not, instead of being down or depressed, we feel optimistic. And so I, I'm just like, I'm glad I can help, you know? That is incredible. I mean, and that to me is just what like the power of community is all about, right? Is, you know, and I was the founder of the community. I look at it as like, it's just a gardener, right? Like, okay, I got a little, I got a little garden bed. I may throw some seeds, but everybody else does the rest. Like it just grows and one another supports each other. And it's just incredible to see how well, it changes you, people's lives. I, I, I totally agree. Cause to me, community is about, it's culture, right? And, and when you mm-hmm. talk about data culture as well, you're setting a framework that allows people to, you know, engage one another, experience one another, share ideas, you know, collaborate together. Um, And, and to me, I'm like, this should be 
part of our norm, not just our, our jobs, right? Like our, just our jobs or the key words that people say in the job discipline, like this should be how we live life. And this would be such a better world if we lived that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and, and we have the tools, we have the, the capabilities to do those types of things. You just need the people to basically kind of spotlight that we can use them in a new way to actually help one another or engage one another or have new discussions, you know? Um, so it's, it's fascinating. So for individuals who they may not be in a CDO role, but are loving that you compared some of those skills of being in a community and giving back to a community to a CDO, it's easy to join communities. Like what do you recommend for people who join a community? Like how do you become a like a valued community member and either get the most out of it for yourself, but also give back to that community. I think it all comes down to, uh, you know, a couple of ways that you can do that. A, you know, what is the community? Like, what does that mean to you? Is it where you live? Is it, you know, your, is it, you know, uh, uh, you know, hobbies? Is it, you know, what is it that you want to feel connected to? Right. I think that's one thing that people need to ask themselves and figure it out. Then I think that once you do that, you know, what are the existing mechanisms to engage into that community? Is it your city and you want to be engaged with like the city council and understand the laws and the frameworks? Is it the schools? Is it, you know, what is, is it a hobby? Is it, I have a community that I'm a part of that's related to a uh, primary immune deficiency disease because it's, it's a disease type that I have and it's very rare. And so there's a community where we share information and learn from each other. So A, what is it that you want to be engaged with? What mechanisms exist for you to tap into that community? And if they don't exist, make it, right? You can have a Facebook group. You could have, you know, you could do something on some of the other social media sites. You could create videos and do, you know, YouTube or do Twitter or whatever you wanted to and create the community that you think should exist. You'll be surprised how many people then start to come to you, right? In regards to, oh yeah, I saw this or I heard this or this impacted me and start to follow and start to engage. And then you're really actually building that community from there. You're already giving me new ideas because just recently I got a harp and I'm learning to play the harp and I joined this whole harp community and I, it's like, I love it, right? I'm like a new part, a part of a new community. And I was just thinking like, I wonder what harp everybody else got because I just got my harp. And now I'm like, oh, well, nobody's asked that question. I should just ask that question and you post should. it and share people and post it. It's you like should. you're inspiring me of like, oh, sometimes when I show up to new communities, which it's funny yeah, like it, I lead a community, I'm still you, shy. <laughs> like, oh, it's it's a, come that's, on. The, that's the funny thing, right? I think we... You can be shy and still help drive communities, right? Like if you think about the tech aspect and, and you there's lots of tech that that eliminates the face-to-face -face aspect of shyness, right? Um, meaning, you know, you you can I'll give you an example. Not just in my day job, but here's a little history or, you know, too much information from a windy <laughs> perspective. But like my husband and I met on a video game. And I was divorcing my first husband years and years and years ago. And um, I, I had a bunch of developers who worked for me that were constantly talking about a video game. And I never was a video game person, et cetera. And um, I joined this video game and my now husband started playing the video game at the same time that I did. Okay. We started in the same day. Okay. We started in the same little newbie zone of this video game and we got to know each other through just chatting, right? Like through regular chatting, through a video game, using a keyboard. And then we started to like plan days to, to actually play together or times to play together because we were kind of advancing in this game at the same time. And then eventually we got to a point where we advanced to a, another video game that was EverQuest for any people who are really old and know MRPGs, but um, we eventually got over to like a World of Warcraft and other things where we were coordinating like high end rating with like a hundred people in them, 75 people in them who all have distinct roles. But the only way you were communicating was through like, um, again, your keyboard or through like event channel. And it wasn't people you needed, you knew really well, like, you know, out in, in the real world. 
but that coordination and that ability to communicate and that ability to kind of like identify a commonality or a goal, or to me, that's kind of what community building really is. That's also kind of like the, what the 10% was, or as a CDO, like that's you're, you're, you're an enablement glue for everyone else to make their goals through data, you know, uh, long-term uh, as far as with a company. And so, you know, I, to me, I, I'm like, I live this in my real life as far as how I think about the world or how I think about connections. And it doesn't have to be in front of someone, right? Like if you're shy or if you have an idea and you type it and someone says no, or they ignore it, what's there to be shy over, right? Like it's not a personal insult. It's, you know, it, it's just something, there's lots of good opportunities to communicate in different ways to still kind of drive change or drive an idea or bring people together. I love it. So in addition to leading the 10% community, you now seem to be filling your time a lot on different boards. Um, you are an advisor for the University of Washington, advisor for um, Women in Technology World Series, and then now are going to be a professor as well, teaching at CMU. So tell me a little bit more about what you're going to be teaching and what you're excited about in these new roles. Yeah. Um, well, as we've heard, I have some time on my hands and I don't like to sit idle. So I have a lot of things going on. Um, in fact, today, for example, I mean, I think I've been on meetings since eight o'clock and I'm like, how's that work when I don't even have a job? But anyway, so it's <laughs> eight o'clock. So yes, um, lots of things going on. Um, a, I think at UW, right? I think um, influencing the way that schools are really kind of uh, communicating and targeting and training, you know, the, the youth that are coming out and really coming into the market to really make sure they have the right skill sets needed um, in an AI kind of data, you know, data dominant um, engineering kind of dominant world that's kind of around the shoulders, like hugely important uh, to me, right? I, I think that the more people understand, um, you know, big pictures and how different business functions come together and processes that are, 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 are being used across those businesses and the type of information that's being shared, the more advancement we can make, right? From a optimization or, a, you know, opportunity or an AI type of mentality type of world. So double down there. Um, I just today actually had a call with um, the Dean at Carnegie Mellon. I'm officially um, joining as an adjunct professor for their um, C Data O program, this next cohort. So I'll have a cohort that I'm mentoring. So that's super exciting too, because it's not just, um, like undergrads, the, the, the C data O program is really kind of geared towards professionals already. So they've already exited college. They're already in their careers. They want to get to that chief data officer level or chief analytics officer. And so it's almost like a mentorship, you know, a, a sponsorship type of forum to really share best practices or, you know, have you thought about this and guide them through the process, which I think is, um, interesting because they'll have their own experiences, right? Because they're already in the role. And then as far as a lot of the other boards I'm doing, you know, A, with women in, in, in tech, um, you know, anytime we can do anything around DEI or just, you know, advancing and kind of bringing more women to the forefront and kind of equaling out the balance, I think that the better we are as just, you know, a world or a community or, a, you know, a, a company in general, just to get new ideas in and new experiences. So deeply kind of invested in those areas as well. So for those who are, inspired by all the different communities you're involved in and advisor roles and teaching. What advice do you have for people who are either looking to be on a board, an advisor, or getting into teaching? Like, how do you start to curate these opportunities and roles? Well, it's kind of like my advice around just a community. Um, no one's going to come ring your doorbell and, and hand you the silver platter, right? Um, like sometimes you've got to go find out 
who it is that you need to talk to to get involved or who, who do you know who's doing some of these things and reach out to them to see if they can make any connections, et cetera. Like for me with Carnegie Mellon, uh, you know, that was directly working with Peggy Sal. You know, I've known Peggy for a while. I know you know Peggy as well. And I'm like, Peggy, I want to do this. And she just directly contacted me, you know, made a connection and there you go. So um, use your networks. A, to, to, to find where there's an introductory path or a connection to something that you want to do or find the people who are, are, are starting the forums that you would like to mimic for your own self and learn from them. Um, I actually have a call later today with a gentleman I used to work with at Microsoft who's now the head of AI at, at Meta at, at Facebook. And he wants to talk because he wants to join boards. And he's like, how are you doing this? <laughs> You know, so I'm going to kind of share some of my 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 secret sauce. Um, But again, a lot of it's really not big secrets. Go ask questions. Go tell someone that you want to get involved. They're not Mm -hmm. they usually aren't going to come to you if they don't a know who you are or B might know who you are, but don't know that you want to be involved. So put yourself out there. Um, It's amazing what happens when you just ask. Right. I couldn't agree more. And I also just say, like, just show up to, I can't tell you how many times that just because I was always there and like people ended up being like, Hey, would you like to do this position? I was an advisor for UC Davis and I was the one who always showed up. And then they're like, Hey, would you teach this program? And like, okay. Right. So it's amazing what happens when you also just volunteer and continue to show up and the opportunities that will unfold that way as well. I mean, that's kind of the same idea in regards to just, you know, asking or you can't ask if you don't, you know, either show up and show that you have an, an interest or, you know, figure out who's having those conversations or who's created that forum or who's whatever you, you, you've got to invest yourself in it, right? Like, again, things don't magically, you know, sprinkle unicorns and sparkles and just show up at your door. You have to go after them sometimes. And sometimes that means putting yourself out there in a way that may not be initially comfortable. But again, people are people. And the worst thing anyone can say is no, then move to the next, you know what I mean? Um, and move to the next um, and just keep, keep going after it until the right things happen. I think that's great advice. And I think if we start to think about how little people are actually thinking of us and everyone is just walking around thinking of themselves half the time, that it's not that big of a deal going and asking and getting that no, because it's saying, okay, this door is closed. So got to go look for the next door and see what happens. You know, to me, that's one of the like one of the biggest things I've I've learned in my career in general. Like like my career my career trajectory started shooting up once I started figuring out that you know if I'm at X level of a role, but I have an idea or I see something that um, a I should say something, and if I have an idea how to change that to be more effective, that often that's not going to my direct manager, but maybe their manager or their manager's manager to basically you know, seeding the idea or saying, here's what's happening. And once I started doing that and started becoming unafraid of doing that, right? A lot of people get afraid of titles or, you know, are you skipping a chain of command? Or again, think about your 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 work environment and your particular culture. But once I started realizing that sometimes the people who control what happens are, you know, at a much higher level in the focus and dropping the scaredness or shyness around approaching them, like my career just, just, just shot, you know? Um, Cause again, people are people. Don't be afraid. Um, you know, if I was standing next to Bill Gates in an elevator, I'd probably turn to him and be like, you know, I have a whole bunch of ideas for you. Here's one. Let's get started here now. You know what I mean? I, just, I wouldn't be afraid anymore because they all put their pants on the same way you do. Yes. And again, there's very little they can do to actually make you feel bad about coming up with an idea and approaching them. Um, the least thing they could do is just ignore it or say no. And really, does that matter? That happens all the time, probably in real life and other situations. So you might as well actually see what you can get to stick in, what opportunities you can create. I love it. Well, it sounds like you're getting a lot of things to stick right now. And 
One, I want to say a big thank you for starting the 10% community. I've joined and I'm excited to post some jobs in there and ask some questions and be an active member of it as well. And I'm excited for you on this path. And like, I was going to say it's like a wide open road, but I don't know, you know, since you've been in meetings since 8 a.m. So maybe it's the road, maybe it's filling up a little too much now. We'll see, right? <laughs> well, I, I would say that, I mean, Anytime you are, I mean, I'm at this point because of what's happened with my own job, right? Where it's kind of like the the road or the or the journey is when I get to help decide, you know, what happens for the next chapters. And so, and there's lots of potentials and you may see me doing a lot of things because I, you know, I have an interest in a lot of various opportunities, but, but the reality is, is that um, it's an exciting time, right? And, and I, I thrive off of that. I love to innovate and, you know, I, I, I'm a big vision person and, and there's a lot of opportunity to do a lot of interesting things in a lot of different fields. So we'll see where it goes. Um, but I know that you and I, I think we'll be kind of partnering a little bit more deeply going forward as well. So I'm super excited about that. And um, we'll see this 10 percent in itself is like this could be a product man we could do a lot of interesting things off of this to just help grow tech community or in culture in general in a supportive way and in a deeper way you know for people that would scale all across the world for years to come i could not agree more i mean sometimes unfortunately it is hard times in our lives that bring us together with others and creates new fertile ground for ideas to grow or new connections that would have never happened. So, well, I have so much empathy for everyone who's going through this. I also am very hopeful for them that this is a time and a, a pivot, the right pivot for them at the right moment that leads them to that. Totally. Well, they're not alone. And again, I, I, I don't think most of these layoffs aren't anything to do with like performance they're truly like their people are cutting whole functions they're you know they're dropping you know business strategies and if anything is said i think that the growth in engineering or the growth in data the growth in ai like we're just going to see more and more automations coming more and more you know focus in these areas so this is really an opportunity for people to step back and think about what you want to do um i get the stress of it too i mean for me <laughs> You know, I, my husband's been a stay-at-home dad for 17 years. I've got four kids and my mother moved in um, last year. So when I first got laid off, I don't know who was more upset, my mom or me. But, you know, <laughs> my mom was, uh, for the first several weeks, was like, why are, you, why are you not dressed in a suit and going out with your resume? And I'm like, that's not how my world works. Like, everything's online. I just look to people. Um, <laughs> So, so, I mean, there's additional stresses that come in depending on your house and who, you know, who's living with you from a family perspective. So I get that part as well, but take the time to really think about what, what you want to do. Um, again, use your networks, um, join the 10%. Anyone can join. We're doing job sharing. We're doing startup crowdsourcing. We're doing all types of things. So, you know, there are others out there and it can be a very exciting and pivotal time in a successful way um, if, if you get engaged in the right forums and think about it in the right way. I love it. Well, I think that's a perfect place for us to wrap up today. We do have a couple of fun rapid fire questions and there's one on here I'm really curious about for your answer, but let's start with an easy one. <laughs> Favorite place you've traveled? Uh, favorite place I've traveled at uh, Rome. I, I love Rome. Um, I said, I have a history degree and I grew when I was a kid, I was a nerdy kid that loved to read like mythology and stuff like that. And I could just get lost in at Rome. Happiness is happiness is, um, f fulfillment. Um, f feeling fulfillment and feeling like you have impact. In the next five years, I hope to, and no pressure, but this was the question I was very oh, curious what your answer would be. In the, the next, next five, five years, five years that, that's a good one. World domination. I don't, is that, I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's all on the table. Right? It's all on the table. I'm just kidding. Um, solve world <laughs> hunger. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> in the next five years, like I, I want to, I want to make the world a better place, you know, um, whether it's again, 
helping people understand their unique skills or again, helping build communities in a, in a new way. Um, I, and I want to help people basically be able to understand how to leverage technology in a way to do so. Really? Last question to me, curiosity is. Oh, that's a good one. I like that one. To me, curiosity is never ending and undying. Um, number one, uh, you know, I think that you should always be curious. Um, I also think that curiosity is constant learning, right? Um, how do you become better? How do you learn more about the world around you? How do you understand others better? Um, curiosity is key to that. Perfect. Well, again, Wendy, thank you so much for your authenticity. I mean, I'm loving this, like, no makeup look and everything. Yep. You're coming in 100% <laughs> real here. Okay, I think you're going to start a trend. Maybe that's a new rule on the Data Bytes podcast. It I should know. be a rule. I want to see you do it next first. So okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so excited for what lies in the road ahead. Um, we will post, if we can get, a, I'll post a link to the 10% community in the show notes in case there's others who are listening to this who find themselves in that group. Or if you're a recruiter or just want to support, this is just not for those who have been laid off. I think um, this is a great opportunity to network and connect. With them. So um, thank you. And anything else you want to say to our audience before we wrap up today? No, I, I, I think you, you, you ended it well. If anyone wants to join the community and you don't know how, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or, you know, um, maybe I say that you could share my personal email address. I don't know if you post something with it, with your, 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 um, actual post, but, um, happy to help you get into the community. Um, it'll be interesting to see how we can spin this to keep this forum and, and get in like attached and engaged, um, going forward as we all go into new roles. Well, I just want to say again, a big thank you to you, Wendy, and a thank you to our listeners. Remember to stay curious and keep learning, and we will catch you next time on the Data Bytes Podcast. If you enjoyed today's conversation on the Data Bytes Podcast, we welcome you to continue the conversation and join our global community by becoming a member at womenindata.org.